us a time after we end this one. So keep an eye out for that and keep an eye on social media for when it will be. Into picks and bands, and we're seeing more of the same on that band list. Now, I just want to see Mad Life on Crush. Oh, that, that's just my goal, because when he actually toys with his opponents and he puts them on the run, he has very good predictions with the hooks, and, and that, that actually and makes that, Stom still entertaining. So in that sense, do you actually still do you like try to learn while casting, watching somebody like Mad Life play a thrashing game? Oh, I know what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> I already know. I Two steps ahead. So Callista gets banned out. Third one coming in from Fire on the LCK side. They look like they're going to put 100 points here in their favor if they can get this. And it is much needed as IWC goes for a last ice ban of Alistar. Oh, man. They are knocking out so many things that I don't think are as relevant anymore. Yeah. Marin playing mm -hmm. the Rumble. I know it's a great champion for him. Faker's Rise. And then the Alistar at Madlife. There's so best. much still available. And they go for the Mundo immediately. And that's a flex pick. It can go top. And you can also put it in the jungle. Yeah, definitely Mundo, really high priority on this patch. Uh, do some uh, pretty interesting things. <laughs> overall, though, the response, Lu, at least I think, are great fix here overall. Um, Could have maybe went for like a Quinn jungle, because I think if you really want to beat these guys, you may want to just straight up snowball with that Quinn. Um, picking a pretty safe, safe macro approach here uh, from IWC, so I'm not sure how that's the right plan to fight LCK, but we'll see. How are they going to take it? I mean, Faker just lost a 1v1. He must be tilted. <laughs> We've seen CIS winning 1v1s because Kira is training the rest of the team finally. This could be this could be big. Yeah, next time I'm on the desk, my entire chair is going to be sideways because all of Team Fire has been tilted <laughs> in this tournament. 1v1s, it's not working out. So up. The pick 10, it's like, what, what have you guys done to us? Yeah. And now LCK, they want to come up with a victory here on this 5v5 game mode here. And they have great power picks. Yeah, and we're seeing that this win come in. Did get changed a lot right now. Just the, the buff on the Q, the, like the blind makes it so annoying to play. You don't really see it when you're spectating, but the vision drop is so hard to deal yeah. with. In addition to the speed on the ultimate, she can just show up. Usually when you see a player show up on a minimap, you expect a certain amount of time for that player to be traverse the map. Doesn't matter for Quinn, she can go from top to bottom in like literally like 20 seconds. Yeah, and despite these champions being flex picks, I was looking at them, I'm like, wait, Quinn jungle, Mundo top. It's actually probably going to be Trundle top, Mundo jungle, and Quinn 80 carry. Yeah. That makes the most sense to be here. And IWC, you know, the CIS, they're actually getting a lot here as well. Could be Trundle support. That is true. Ooh, we have seen Trundle support. It could be. I would like that. I also like Quinn in a solo lane, so it would make me really sad if they use their at 80 carry because I want to see the potential. It's somebody like, I don't even know, Mario like out with it. feels like a waste putting on AD yeah. carry. Yeah, yeah like absolutely. Especially absolutely. when absolutely. things like Lucian and Misfortune are open. The Kench, though, picked up on the other side off the bench. Going to be able to eat up Lex if he gets into any trouble. They actually have quite a bit of denial here on the side of Ice. So once Fire thinks they've got deep enough for a kill, you got a lot of denial here from a wild growth. Get eaten, a repel, a lot of actually, things on board. Actually, still thinking about it. I think it, yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. You're I think good. It's a new it. thought. No, no, this is, I think it might be Quinn mid, actually. I've seen that before. Quinn mid, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Quinn mid, Trundle top, Mundo jungle sounds like the most, okay, never mind. Okay, the, the, no, that's just it's, a hover. Maybe it's like, a hover. because they got five melees, they're just gonna oh pick the Bruiser champions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, the CIS team comp, four of these guys actually played on hard random together. Right. So they have a lot of synergy yep. and they were using it during the IWC. IWCA and Tom Kench was actually picked for Demonco six out of their ten games and they always seem to play compositions that are focused around Lex on Tristana yep. or Vayne and he just he waits to get through the laning phase and then he carries the game later so yeah. it's just all stall compositions here and yeah, LCK rounds out with uh, with LeBlanc. I'm trying. I'm done trying to predict. So we'll see how yeah. they swap around. But IWC well, really good protect the Vayne comp and they just need like one more. Champion to round that out, looking for the Malphite hover right now, but overall oh. they have the denial if Vayne gets caught with the time catch. We have the buff on the Vayne. The only issue you would say is lack of damage, so Fiora right here can actually fix that. They are yeah. very one-dimensional though in their damage output, especially since Lulu in the later parts of the game Ooh. is going to more into a, a utility role rather than an AP damage there. Yeah. Do we actually get a try-hard game from both sides? Go ahead. Yeah. I <laughs> try-hard is kind of banned. They banned it at the Analyst Desk. Oh, that's it's right. A, it's a serious game. We overuse that. We do what we want here, though, on Caster Island. <laughs> <laughs> it's a try-hard game. <laughs> yeah. This uh, one's TH squared, boys. I actually really like what Fire ended up doing here. The LCK squad, they took Trundle as early as possible, so yeah. you can't counterpick the Mundo in that jungle or the top lane, because that is an extraordinarily good pick, and then they made it so we have all of these power picks to ourselves, and they're utilizing them. You could see that IWCA, the IWCA team 
they were banning things that are a little bit of relics here. Like, it's a little bit part of the past. That's true. It's not updated. So how do you feel it's going to work? <laughs> <laughs> I think the LCK squad just has so many power picks right now, it's hard to tell. And you did call the Trundle support as well. I've I mean, Quinn did end up an 80 carry, though. So yeah. interesting. A few, un a few unfortunate things. Mad Life doesn't get thrashed. Quinn's at 80 carry. It's okay. I will take Quinn AD carry if I get Faker LeBlanc. Yeah. All right. That's the trade I will make here. That's one of like the Ten Commandments of League. Don't give Faker LeBlanc. Yeah. It's going to be a bad situation for you. I guess unless you're running Morgana in the mid lane and your name's Pawn. But we are going to be heading into our final regional match of the day, a 5v5 between the LCK and the IWC. It is going to be huge. Team Fire win at the hashtag or Team Ice win at LOL Esports. Make sure you are heard on social media. As we head into the matchup, we're going to see who gets some points in their favor. I think it's just hashtag Ice win, hashtag Oh, you're fire right. Win. I said team. Yeah. Not team. I, you were probably listening to Deficio <laughs> earlier who managed to screw them up at least four times in a single cast, which was impressive That's in true. itself, yeah. right? But yeah, overall, thematically, though, the Quinn AD carry does make sense into a protective vein composition. Because yeah. that, that blind is going to really pay dividends when Vayne can't even see who she's attacking and the entire team relies on Vayne carrying in these fights. Yeah, and when somebody gets hit with the blinding assault, you basically are an AD carry with 300 range at that point. Doesn't matter if you're mm -hmm. Tristana or anything like that. And it's a thousand range skill shot. So you can hit any AD carry, even them, even being out of their range. I haven't seen too much NAR play here, if any, so far at the All-Star Tournament. It, it is a great Marin champion, though. Absolutely. You have to ban that out, or you had to ban that out back in the past. Right. There's just so many things in the top lane. Ooh. It's actually smart. You can do that. Smite will come up again. I can easily just smite a spiraling, get some extra gold. That's a little my new <laughs> thing, but it, it's definitely worth doing. And then just in the top lane, yeah, Nar. I think it works well into Fiora. It sounds like a matchup where you can keep her at bay with relative ease. I think he'll be able to get in, get that frozen mallet early, and you're definitely not going to be doing anything in lane, that's for sure, if he chooses that build. And we will see the start in the bottom side by Ice. Not a lot of lane swaps coming in with these teams. They're going standard since it hasn't been a practice thing within that. Kind of yeah, squad. not only are they going standard, there's no jungle camp leash here because the jungle got changed a little bit. Uh, doing camps will no longer grant you as much experience yeah. because you need that boost from the jungle item. That's why we see actually a hard leash here just power farming that jungle up, making yep. up so for a really interesting level 3 gank in the top lane that will maybe decide the early pace of this game. Good. Everybody's taking my jungle level 1. <laughs> I had it. I'm still taking it. No. I thought you meant good for the early pace. <laughs> because because actually, the way... Hang on. You see a trade? The way the bottom lane minions, they've been changed recently so that they all die literally within the same 2 second span. So you can actually still take a camp and lose 0 creeps on lane. It's still worth it. So junglers, keep trying should still take those camps as bot lane. Yeah, that change was the first minion will not get focused down in the very first minion right. wave. He so there's no like R three minions and like, fight me! Exactly, they won't focus it down. There's no yeah. RNG if you were doing a jungle camp and you yep. come back, you're like, oh, well, my lane is done, but no more of that. Yeah. Happy for the laners. Oh! Okay, the vault onto him will slow him down. It actually doesn't hit the Q, though. Good trade, definitely a win in the health department. You see Marin keeping Smurf back to his turret. Level two, Marin should hit three here. Nice and easy, but it won't give him too much more of an advantage on the lane. Smurf should be fine. Those TPs are up. Mid laners will not be running TP. They're looking for kills. Ignite in the mid lane. And Faker's already got his passive down. And I'm watching score this game. That jungle Mundo, 13 CS already. Very, very close to highest in the game. And he just can go oh, oh, back forth. No, Ignite. Oh. I think it was the EQ Ignite that he was looking for after that flash. Not enough mana though. Whoops. Good react flash there from Fake It or respecting the potential damage coming out. Q wouldn't have been enough to kill him, but right. kept him, keeps him in the lane at least. At least they time each other's flashes, right? <laughs> Helpful. With their own flash. I do that all the time. <laughs> no, that, that's what I'm doing. Just time it is flash. Oh boy. Double buff to Maj. Got him out of life that. Gotta predict that. Mm. Got to be in the mind of your opponent. Even Marin even walks into the river a little bit, knowing there won't be too much of a rebuttal there from Dimaj. He goes back into his own jungle. Ooh, looks like bot lane has been pushed out a little bit. A nice pillar placed beautifully that. on the wall, calling for Dimanko to have to eat up left. Yeah, that, that's the strategy of this lane. You pillar so Gwyn can close the gap, get the top like the, the jump off, and then start whacking away the bane. But as time <laughs> catch does, just hard counters these really elaborate setups. Just whop, every time. Go power. For I feel like this is like a Lee Sin versus Elise, right? You're always going to hit Spiderlings instead of your target, and you just want to pull your hair out. Oh! oh! He played it! He's going, he's going down Still with counts. a retribution kill from Kiro, but he played that mimic so nicely. Or mirror image, I should say. 
So there's actually a strange mechanic when you get a counter kill on somebody. If you are the one who dies first, but you get an ignite counter kill, if it's a solo kill, right. you don't get experience. Nope. If there's an assist on it, you do get experience. So Faker actually ends up getting a slight bit of experience over Kira when everything's all said and done. Yep, because Faker or Kira was dead. Great call there and good eye. Looks like Marin trying to give Smurf the time of day in the top lane as he keeps him pushed up against the turret. Only one to one so far, so muscles have been fleshed on both sides. No real advantage gained. This bot lane though, trying to get their shots in when they can, but Lex has to be careful he doesn't get vaulted and queued. That blind put him in a sore spot. He's pretty much relying on Demonko to save him. And there's the level five, same. And he's still got a big minion wave there as well. So that counter kill happening in that order is actually very big for this match. Smurf. Oh, oh, the flash. Oh, he has flash, flash too, Q, 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 got him. There it is, it's gonna be Smurf coming up with the kill. Two to one now, his mid lane also going a bit hard. And what? that's gonna be... What, go what, ahead, go ahead. what ELO is his main? Oh. He just solo <laughs> like, killed the see? MVP of Worlds. We played it smart, right? There's definitely a bit of, not disrespect there, but you're saying, you know, this isn't gonna be punished, this isn't gonna be punished, and Smurf is finding that. He is getting in for the punishes. He's gotta walk back to lane, but it looks like Marin's gonna do the same, even with, no, Marin will TP up and push this wave into the third. Yeah, definitely impressed here with, with Kira and Smurf. Kira playing mm -hmm. forward, it's, it would be so easy to just be scared of Faker. He's not afraid to even flash aggressively on Faker, continually start pushing him in, and then Smurf with a really nice play. When you score, no ultimate yet, so he has to be careful here. This is not the point of the game where Mundo is strong. Got row. Oh, it looked like Kira turned away there for a second, actually, but still good damage to be dealt. Boy. They could group mid and actually siege this tower because Faker's out of mana. So if they actually moved in here in mid lane with, with both Kira and Dimashke, I think they could have done a lot of damage and pressure on that tower, kept Faker down. Looks like Dimashke is going to go for utility build here, too, who has the warding smite. So getting a swap. These are Whoa. absolute plays that, that I love. The rinse and repeats. You know the teleport is down. You're going to make the guy have a long walk. Mm. Baker's going to have to take that walk as well. And Vice taking control of the map here. Man, they make an advantage out of it. Though. He got Faker! Oh, no way! You have to be kidding me! Faker! Kira gets a kill onto Faker. Doesn't even have to use Ignite. Doesn't even have to use his Flash. And previously, that Wild Growth interrupting the distortion, not allowing to do damage up in the top lane. Dimashke, right. he learned from a mistake, pulls the gap, forced Marin to juke a little bit. Lex should be able to get Devour or Tumble out of here, so he's fine. Back to that top lane, he held the Cocoon this time. He forced the Cocoon from yeah. point blank range. Good sight. Really hard for Marin to dodge. Marin did, like, doesn't, he, he was never a target to be killed. Just chunked down the lane. Again, advantage them for Smurf later on. So IWC team here playing extremely well together. And also, flip-flopped Amo's top teleport, so he could see a play from Smurf if he gets control of that lane again and the team wants to do something in this bot lane. Prey and Madlife have been quite aggressive, so a ward behind them could be detrimental. Damanko and Lex still farming it up, 55 to 65 in this lane, so Prey is seeing a bit of a lead. Now, when these champions hit level 6, Faker can start roaming. Prey can actually start roaming. If they continuously have the lane push, right now they can't capitalize on that because Lex and Dimanko are still farming. Mm -hmm. But a level 6 Quinn can simply roam to the mid lane. Kira right now in trouble. Juke oh, one no. Last no. Wild Growth is not there. Very nicely played. Pinked out by score. Faker as well coming around from the side. That's why you time their flash with your flash. Yeah, yeah and that's why you time blue buffs too. Because he was actually walking over likely to pick up the blue buff or just picked it up. Didn't quite see that. But on the way back, he just insta gave and this is the 7 minutes 45. If you know the jungler starts blue, you know that jump, that buff will be up. He will likely move there. It's a really good game read here going uh, from too. score and Faker. Saw Dimashke on the other side, so he's just going to do his red buff as well and just pretty much get all of the buffs on the map yep. in this side. Saw that ping out very nicely done by score to keep grabbing an advantage for his team. He knows the lanes are hurting a little bit, and he hasn't actually been in for too many ganks, just making sure things aren't happening for ice rather than ganking. Pretty greedy there from Kira to walk back the, the unsafe path to mid lane without knowing where the jungle is. And look what scored it. Oh, got both buffs. Got that blue buff from earlier too. Ooh. Ooh. Quick blue suede shoes by Dimashke. Stepping out of that one. Knows though, they have an idea of where score is. And here's a bit of, the, of a rotation for wards in the bot lane. Prey putting some down to make sure they can go a little bit aggressive. Oh, Kira's sure. gone for more, but Mad Life, of course, just gonna back off. River Vision is incredibly important if you're running Quin AD carry as well, because you, again, you push up and then the threat in the middle lane. Faker, all, all he needs to do is connect the chains, because the damage will come from whoever joins that party. Whether it's 
Mad Life here, whether it's score, whether it's both of them. Or everybody. Oh. Nope. Oh. There's that denial we were talking about in Champ Select. Demon go to another lane and he saves Kira's life. Flash used, however. Wild growth as well, but they get him out alive. He just came back to lane and it would have been even worse for him to go back down. You can see Prey had an idea to help as well, seeing that ultimate from Quinn. The speed around the map could still be something Fire uses here to get control later in the game. Is it kind of... It's obviously toned down, though, when you bring Quinn to an AD carry, because you're still trying to get that CS. You're not one split push. No, just going for a kill here. Oh! I choose correctly, sir. Takes down Faker. Faker not having a great time. Go for the one with Ignite on it. Yes. Do that one. That's the real one. The burning, try and kill it. Yeah. But yeah, you were talking about Quinn being a little bit toned down. Yeah. It also ends up in scaling as well, because Quinn inc scales incredibly well, mm -hmm. but it's not the same type of full crit build, right? You usually go for a Yumu's Ghost Blade first, and then you start going for, like, some people go Essence Reaver, Static Shiv. It's not the same type of build and right. build path. So, but Quinn still does an incredible amount of burst and has great utility to her kit. Now you can see Lex keeping himself nicely shielded by his minions Whoa. for most of the time. A huge ball through, though. Puts Prey right where you can hit that Q. Flying target. Gets him more damage, and it looks like they won't be able to add any more there. Knowing Demonko could stop a lot of this. It's actually quite interesting because the pillar came up and stunted Prey's own vault, yeah. so he actually ended up closer for more auto attacks as Lex was walking away. So that was actually pretty cool. I don't know if that was intended or not, but it ended up working out. Wow. And a little too far up, Marn. Oh. First got Flash again. Maybe tiny vitals on a tiny Gnar, but he yeah. still hit him, flashes it out. Looks like he'll go back, may TP back oh, lane, depending on how well that is pushed. Damage K to the back, but he's getting hit by Grom damage as well. That's not going to help be him there. whatsoever. Oh, no. Does not want to be there. <laughs> Neither of them do. No chain coming out of Faker. I thought Kira was actually going to get double locked up there for a second. Could there be a chase? Quarter of a mana bar for Kira, but does not look like they can get any kills out of this. Not enough vision. Oh, wait it's a, a fake one. Oh! <laughs> that was close. Very, very close. I mean, no more double Qs on this Lulu, yeah. like back in the day. Overall, teleport from Smurf could have made that turn out around, but good moves there from uh, the LCK squad, though. The triple pink ward in the river. I really like seeing that. Pink ward's so strong right now. Faker, not afraid of dying. No, it's that's one thing I've always noticed about Faker, or the rest of the team as well. When they commit to something like that, it seems like someone like Faker's just putting a little extra damage in. But the other person gets baited into a fight, and then you see three people come over the shoulder of Faker and kill you. It's something LCK teams do all the time. We almost saw a bit of it right there. Prey, he'll be easy or easily able to clean this up. Almost actually got the attack there with the Off help the of Valor. It's okay. Shame on you. It's okay. Shame on you that's <laughs> that's his his way of saying I'm not tryhard. His support wasn't there to kill it for him. Blame the supports on this. Yeah, yeah, you would. Yeah. <laughs> Why aren't you warding for me? I don't need to buy So that's an incorrect jungle. back for Mad Life. Yeah. Got it back. I was actually looking at this top lane matchup, and it's just getting so much attention here for Smurf. But Smurf, in terms of keystones, he actually took Grasp of the Undying, the one that does percent HP and also heals you. A good teleporter. Smurf coming in in the back, though. Faker. Distortion. All right. Mad Life should be oh, okay on this one. He's going to flash out. His vitals will not Ooh. be tagged. Smurf! He's going to get taken down. He dashes away on that. Kira, low on mana, can't help. Demonko actually thinks that he was becoming the flank support. But what is that? You don't flank support. <laughs> Demonko is, is really wishing there was a cancel button on that. That <laughs> voice is good. Guys, I'm here. Oh, there it is. Cancel button. Cancel. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, so we'll see what happened. Demonko is probably like, hey, Abyssal Voyage cast on its own. It put me in the middle of the fight. I don't, I don't actually know what think happened. he even used it there. I think it's still up right now. You're right. But yeah, so he he walked there. Yes. Just the flanking support. He's just being like, I'm here, guys. I got their backs. They can't retreat. <laughs> Wait, what's going on? I'm out of mana, says oh. Kira. Oh. He's like, I'm out of mana. I couldn't attack mid. I don't know what's going on here. Ref, usually when you kill Faker a couple of times, yeah. the game should be over. Is that not how it goes? Like, is no? it, yeah, take this some isn't like Wait, 1v1 rule? Oh, what? <laughs> That's not this fun game mode, kill Faker. That's not what we're playing here. We've completely took him out multiple times. Impressive, though, so far in the early game. Not IWC here. Some, They've some really good, made some moves. Some really good know, moves. Just really. smart gameplay. Like, the way he played the aggressive flash, came with some vigor, pixies at the right timing, landing his proxy cues in the top lane, smurf as well, going in. 
the pressure overall yeah pretty impressed i honestly thought this would be like gg20 stop yeah if I'm, if not I'm gonna lie honest, i was right there but no i do think that the composition from lck is a little bit strange because they just took all these power picks and it just looks like they're slotted into places that may not mm -hmm. be ideal for them just like trundle and quinn true but they just try to take everything right that's when you're holding too much <laughs> but at the same time, they are playing incredibly well on the CIS side. The four of these guys that, that were on hard random together had that communication, and then you just add in the jungler, yeah. and it seems to work really well for them. But the guys I was talking about right when we started this, Smurf and Kira have both solo killed the members across the rift from them, the world champions. It's very, very true. Interesting to see these two go down the quickest. But then again, I guess that would be the thing you have on your plate as IWC, saying, let's get in the minds of the two players that could probably raffle stomp alone against our entire team and put them down. Because Marn would do that, even though they banned his champions, and so would make around a little bit. But regardless of the kills, though, the, the gold stayed for the majority of the game relatively even. Can't remember what it was right before the pause, but overall, we go back to the game. LCK actually slightly ahead of gold. And looking at the power, it's only going to make it worse. And more importantly, Lex, he kind of has to hard carry this yeah. game. Later on, the composition is built almost entirely around him in, in fights, mostly because Smurf will be split pushing. But it's incredibly hard to do that against the pillar. Once she's behind the vein, she can't actually make use of her tumble. Can't get past the yeah. pillar. And then the blind is so easy to hit, so Vayne gets nullified. And then IWC, IWC will be in trouble. It's a little strange, too, on Lex's build. The first item, Rapid Fire Cannon. Sometimes you see Static Shift for Wave Clear. Sometimes you see Blade of the Room King still. And Rapid Fire Cannon seems a little bit premature in this build. That seems like something that way later on you get. Yeah. And th even then, you trade it off for like a Phantom Dancer, which is still very good on Vayne, despite the current state of Phantom Dancer. If you were to put two things in front of me and call it Rapid Fire or Static Shiv, though, I would definitely buy a Rapid Fire Cannon. So, I'm with Lex. Gotta go with Lex on this one. Then again, that's why I'm play-by-play. Play. <laughs> 15 minutes coming off of the game, you're like, it's a pretty red color, let's, let's <laughs> buy it. <laughs> It gives me this circle at one point that's longer than my actual ring. I appreciate your analysis, though. <laughs> four to four. Let's see what they can do here, if any kills are going to come from this. There was a bit of movement down in the bot lane by Score, but it looks like he's just going to hold off. And oh, they commit to this. Lex takes a lot. Yeah, Score definitely wants this now. Level nine jungler coming in as well. And this could be bad. Demonko on Grey Health now. Lex is the target. They're both a target. Yeah, Usually you just go for one, but they want the full plate and dessert. Lex under the turret. Score's going in with the ultimate. He hits a cleaver before the flash. Can he finalize the kill? It's going to oh. be the hit coming in. Very nicely done from Prey. That's going to be another walk in in the I think I can situation from Kira, but he cannot. Yeah, everybody dies helping each other. Lex should have just flashed a lot earlier. And then we see as well, like something we haven't talked about. Another counter to this vein uh, carry is like you just steal the 80 from the vein, like the Trundle Bite, I believe, still steals some attack damage there from, <laughs> yeah. from Lex, so it's incredibly hard Stop for them to find back. Finally, identified the counter to Tom Kench, you know. Don't let him devour his 80 carry, just kill him first, then kill the 80. Trundle's actually an interesting pick against Tom Kench as well. Right? You can eat your 80 carry, but if you can't get out yeah, from the you pillar, then you're gonna spit pillar. out your 80 carry. Got a good range on it, too. Maj not liking that situation very well. Almost lost red buff over stop burning, Faker. Stop burning. But he did burn Faker's Ignite. Yeah, we paused the game on roughly even goal. And right now, 5,000 goal in the lead. Yeah, how, LCK. what? I, they took out a loan. That's the only way. That or they got really good investment. Just two minutes later, they have come up with that gold lead now. Marn hasn't seen really any pressure since Dimashke has been kind of repairing the rest of the map right now. A lot of action to the bot lane, and that's left Marin to get quite big. 30 CS advantage for him and Prey in the bot lane. Coming around, though. Here's Prey coming in Ooh. with the help of Valor. He's going to throw down the blinding assault onto Kira. He's figuring out where to go and what to do. The team's pillar. getting saved. There's the pillar you were talking about, Cyrene. Smurf actually can't get that far away, but they also don't really have enough vision to keep going for what team or what uh, members of Team Ice are coming Ooh. back to the fight. Oh, that was nice. Nice little kick back there off the vault. Score from the back. Hello. No, Baker's here too on this side. <laughs> Score coming in huge. That's a dead Smurf. A one, two, it punch. might be a dead CIS team. All right, Ooh. they're waiting for the E from Demonko. Oh. Now they can attack everybody. Demonko ate somebody, and then you saw Faker's eyes light up to go in for the kill. That's when. That's the worst when the enemy like plans out to play for you and is like, this is exactly <laughs> what we're gonna do. You're all bunched up. We know it's gonna happen. 
Three, two, one. Faker AoE's there. Oh, yeah. W mimic that W. The W feels so good as a LeBlanc player to get that off. It's so satisfying. It's like same point. You don't even go anywhere else. Yeah. Just like, <laughs> thank you. Ooh. Oh, not enough. Locked Condemn. Condemn. Oh, that's just a huge. We were talking about it just a moment ago. That pause came out very close to gold. 10,000 already, 17 minutes in. Incredible oh. just after that pause. Just keeping the momentum up. A lot of these turrets don't get very strong until 15 minutes, 30 minutes. Yeah. This is a great play. Yeah, the score is literally just hurting the cattle. Marin too, you know, one exit, two exit, three exits, all covered. Faker, Bring him here. He just Faker, just go. To the team too. He's like, where's everybody grouped? I'll spit you there. It's a nice cue from Prey as well. That does a lot of damage, yep. especially when you have the Yomo's Ghost Blade because of the armor penetration on it. So good. And That's the, one of the and things the that kills me. Playing, I love playing as Quinn, but against Quinn, you're like, oh, I think I dodged this, but it hit my minions and I still took full damage. <laughs> or worse, my teammate. You know, it's like playing. Oh, yeah, I'll block it for you. Like, I was going to do it. <laughs> I was punished for your mistake. Yeah, it feels good. That's how I feel about Sejuani Ultimate. Like, I dodged it, but he didn't. <laughs> Thanks for the help, buddy. Hey, Prey going hard here. Mad Life is just on his backside. I don't think they're going to be able to finalize that turret kill, but they will finalize oh! the boss kill. Oh, wait a minute. He got eaten. No, he's not. He's oh, still Hicks. alive. There he is. He went repel. That denial from both Elise and Tom Kench catching me off guard, but it looks like they're still able to catch both of those champions. Double kill again for Prey. 705 on point. Yeah, Marin flashed in mid hex, tried to ulti. Everybody was waiting for it. You can hear like a pin drop, and then <laughs> where's Denial? The okay, yeah. then he comes out, kills him anyways. Bruh. Too far ahead right now, LCK. So hard for IWC to really do anything. Lex is getting countered in every single facet if he's even in the fight. Most of these like protective vein comps don't really work very well if vein isn't present. Yeah. It's definitely a start. Look at this. Is Vayne going to be present for much longer? Oh, pillar against Vayne is rough. That's oh, yeah. about all there is to say. Oh, the oh. sigil. It, it, it counts. It hits. Faker gets another kill from himself. A double there. They just came off another double that Prey had. They're just going through the batting order of IWC right now. Yeah, and they also have a Rift Herald onto Marin right now. They picked that up a couple minutes ago, and now they're just pushing with it, and that's how they got these turrets so fast as well. Marin, though, looking for more. Somehow we said earlier this would be a 20-minute game, and we thought it was going longer than that, but that pause for fire put them on top. They figured out whatever they needed to do and just opened the floodgates. Have been relentless now for the past five minutes to give themselves a 14,000. They were just like, eating the cow before they slaughtered it. <laughs> just get it big and fat. Oh. <laughs> get it big and fat. And then it's like, okay, go. Let's get us some... Uh... I'll take that fillet cut, please. So it's going to be Dragon now, too for LCK. I do not believe IWC is going to be able to do much more than repair these side lanes. Mid lane is crushing through as well, which means LCK has their eyes possibly on top or bottom, depending on what they want. Baron has just entered the party. And it might be on the table very soon for the LCK squad. Yeah. You can do it with Mundo with the percent HP that he has on his Q and on his E of his own HP. You do it rather quickly. And you pretty much take no damage because you just ultimate during it. No problem. Man, let's just look at the builds. The difference in items is... <laughs> There's a surplus I mean, of items now for Ayahuasca. Yep. Okay, the picture. Dimanco, oh. he gets the ward. I, I got it! I did it! One job! <laughs> one ward, one kill. There's the double. Everybody's getting a double here. It's like, it's your turn to get a double, Marin. <laughs> you get a double! You get a double! Yeah, everybody double for everyone! Double one. kill! All right. Red buff -o from Except for you, Mad Life. Just one. Mad Life doesn't count. He's fine. It'll be the Baron for them, and a no contest coming in from IWC with jungler and support down here. 5,000 health on the Baron. Marley's are always like, guys, you guys yeah. can play CD. I want some more I'll push the lane so we can keep doing this. Marin leaves early. Sounds just like SPT as well. Damn. Too soon. <laughs> wow. Anyway. No. Great play so far coming from everybody around. Even getting put down as much as they did in the early game. It's something you've always seen from LCK players is that mentality they can keep and continue to use no matter what happens to them. Remember Faker getting killed in the mid lane and he was smiling and laughing. That means you can come back and do things like you do now. Just continue. Faker is the, the strong bell in this situation. He lets you cut him once in this situation three times and then he kills him. <laughs> There goes Zamanko. Yeah. His flash goes down in the end. He thought he could save himself. Lex, a few more hits. Oh, oh the blinding assault. 
Blinding kill there, flash and heal used. It looks like they're gonna be onto the Nexus turrets. They are tanking away right now, and the laser's absolutely cutting through the resistances, but still able to stay long enough. Micro each other in and out to make sure they haven't taken too much damage. The last Nexus turret going down, 22 minutes on the clock, and they are chasing Kira out of his own base. He's like, wait, don't it's, end, a, don't it's a 1v1, I got all of you, just 1v1 me. <laughs> it was a 2v1, that's Faker not what- Faker disregard. <laughs> <laughs> From Faker with love, 24 to four. It's gonna be LCK picking that one up for a fire. Give me 100 points. Finally. <laughs> team, Absolutely. Team actually, fire, actually, yes. Points. Finally. <laughs> you can tell, they came out here. And it's they were all right. Like, you, know, you know, what time is it right now? You know, we've been here a while. We're, we're the NA side. It's traditional, we'll go for baseball. You look at the first few pitches. You make sure you want to hit the third one when they think they had you on the ropes, and you knock it out of the park. Another 100 points for fire, knocks it out of the park, and we're going into day two a little bit closer. I like it. A little bit. That 1v1 bracket was looking <laughs> little, quite little. scary for fire. There's a lot of ice points to be had there. You can see IWC here shaking hands. Great sports about the game. That great early game as well. I mean, they can be happy with this. I think overall this game turned out to be better than most people expected. It was enjoyable overall. Some nice plays there from IWC guys. I think they can go, go home today. Or not home. So back to the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> Reasonably pleased. Really? Crepo? Like that? No, I'm just to send him home, boys. You lost against the Koreans. It's over. Oh. Well, they can also come back tomorrow happy as well. We want them back. Yeah, they have played against the Koreans, which means you don't know, you no longer have to play them. Well, we'll see what happens. We have a lot to go over. We're going to send it to the analysts.